Well, it's that time. It's time for us to have a little fun. Let's play some games and spread some joy on this wonderful Monday evening. I do hope everyone has had a wonderful weekend and that the, their Monday started off on the right foot. That work, if you have it, has gone well for you today. I do know I had a relaxing weekend. Easy. So so. Went from first COVID shot plus some allergy season. On top of that, kind of got that double whammy of taking a few naps to work, deal with some headaches and just general lethargicness. But Monday went well for me. So I'm ready to have some fun and play a game. And I hope you are too. Now, if you're new to the stream, I am jbird underscore the word and i like to play games and spread joy which is my main motto and it's what we do here so on mondays we play games with chat sometimes i'll play a solo game and you get to help me pick the moves and sometimes i'll play a game where you can play along at home and that it will be a roll and write where you can have your own uh, print off where you can play along or if you have the own game you can play as well and then fridays i do what i call unboxing the week where we hang out and chat and y'all in chat get to help pick a game I unbox from my collection because I have quite a few I still need to unbox and open and try out. So y'all get to help me pick what I'm going to try next. So I'll typically give about five or six options that have not been opened. And y'all tell me on stream what you want to see. I open it up. We talk about what's in the box. And if you've played it before, what you think about what you're seeing. And then if something wasn't picked one week, you may not see it for a few more weeks as I rotate through, pull some other things to the table because, hey, you didn't select it. Maybe you didn't want to see it yet. But I do my best to bring it back uh, so we will eventually open everything I own at some point in time. But like I said, Mondays are more about playing the games. Fridays are about just chatting and opening those boxes. Yeah, so today... I have a game I have not played yet. I've played other iterations of this type of game and from the same company, but this specific game I have not. It is going to be Legendary, a James Bond deck builder game. If you ever wanted to be 007 yourself, here's your chance. So I'm going to switch over. We're going to see a little bit of the game. So you can see what we're going on. So this is primarily a card game. Uh, it does come with a neoprene mat. Uh, it plays one to five players. The box says about 45 minutes. Now, that doesn't really account for setup, which, especially if you haven't played before, can be a little bit more ex extensive than a just a regular shuffle and play style game. But nonetheless, it can be worth playing once you get used to the setups of these types of games. So in this game, you're playing as the hero, which, of course, is James Bond. And it's set up, hey, it's Peter. Happy Monday. How are you doing today, Peter? I hope you had a wonderful weekend, played some games, learned something new, relaxed a bit, and your Monday went well is mine. Uh, my weekend was pretty easy. It was relaxing at home, not really doing much. Um, a little bit of video editing, watching other Twitch streamers for TLN, working on Jaws of the Line. We talk about this every week, and I still need to start. Maybe I just need to play it on stream with you. Wink, wink. <laughs> it'll, it'll force me to play. Um, but yeah, my weekend, I got my first first COVID shot last Friday, allergy season's kind of had me a bit lethargic over the weekend, just laying in bed, watching Twitch for the tail end stream, but feeling great now, ready to have some fun. As you can see, we are going to play Legendary, a James Bond deck building game. Yeah, relaxing is perfect, um, which kind of puts you in the mood to play some games once you haven't played in a few days. Um, I'm not sure if you've played this before. Um, I know I've played the Marvel Legendary, and I think I've played the Hobbit version of it as well. 
they have quite a few different versions like Alien. Uh, but yeah, today we're going to play the James Bond version of Legendary. Oh, you haven't played any. Well, uh, I think I know you well enough to say that you know what a deck building game is. But if you don't, pretty straightforward. We start with a basic hand of cards or deck of cards for each player. In this case, we're going to have our 007 uh, basic starter cards, which are kind of allow you to buy more cards. And our double O agent basic starter cards, which are like the bullets for attacking. And then with the James Bond version, we actually get to pick one special starter card, which I'm going to actually have you or anyone else in chat. If they show up, help me pick. So this is one of the new things for the James Bond version. I'm going to put this full so we can see. Um, so we have a special upgrades card, uh, kind of like Dash Martin. We have, of course, you can't go into the field without your field issued gun. Or maybe we just need our standard M6, M16 Special Forces license. Or of course, we need that shake and not stir drink on occasion. It's the classic. You, you can't go without saying that in the movie, right? Or just full on classic bow tie at the table. MI6. <laughs> did, I, did I say M16? I read it too fast. Yeah, MI6. So what, are you picking the MI6? Yep, okay. So we will so of those five, we'll take that one and mix it into our starter deck. So for this version we have four of basically the attack style cards and eight of the cards that allow us to buy stuff. I'll switch back my views. And I'm gonna shuffle all those together. Now I have preset up this game. It is based on the starter first game. Four, the 007 game of this but in it it actually gives you four different basically movie scenarios you can you can play through well you can call it movie books but it has all the the movie artwork so i'm going to be referencing the movies primarily because that's what i've seen i haven't really read the books but yeah we this one we're going to be playing against uh goldfinger as the mastermind if you're playing marvel or something else it uses one of the like the, the well-known villains. Is this OP games? I'm assuming you're saying, uh, meaning the op. Um, this is actually from... Of course, I put the box out of reach. Uh, upper Deck. I, I believe, like, all of the legendary games are from Upper Deck entertainment uh, so this one actually came out in 2019 nice and super random yeah I'm not sure what else upper deck has come out with uh, they've probably done quite a bit more than that I should know but that's part of learning all the different yeah upper deck games uh, I'll see if I can show you the logo. Yeah, they put their logo right there. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it is the sports card company. Well, because it's primarily just cards. Uh, yeah, so in this game, we're going to be playing against Goldfinger. There is a set, basically... Uh, villain deck there's villains in here there's also uh tasks that basically uh goldfinger is attempting to do uh, like mission things that we can attempt to thwart him you'll be right back oh no okay well take your time no rush i'll still be here of course i'll be setting up i'll make sure to not start without you peter And if everyone else is in the chat, let me know that you're here. Let's have a little fun tonight. So let me switch. 
switch to this detail. So I'm going to be showing you where my deck is. I'll be drawing hands of cards on that screen. And to set up, we're going to reveal several cards to our Q branch. This is where some of our allies and other hero type style cards we can purchase into our deck as we play the game. So during the game there'll be chances to potentially get gadgets, we might get wounded, stuff like that can go into our hand of cards, uh, into our deck. As we play cards from our hand, they get used up each turn. We're going to be drawing six cards each turn or hand. Let's go and see what cards we get to start with. Okay, so we're going to have four 007 basics and two double O agent basics. Oh, I realized, are those going to be read backwards? Maybe. Let me see if I can fix that. There we go. Now you'll be able to read the cards the same as me. Okay, so our first hand of cards, we're going to have four of these 007 cards that give us one star each. Stars are spending power, and then these 00 agent barrel of the gun card are attack cards, and they each have one each. Now, this is one of those style of games you play as much or as little as you choose from your hand, but anything you do not play will go to discard at the end of your turn. So it's kind of a use it or lose it scenario. So during the game, we'll be able to purchase cards from this bottom row from the Q branch to add. The cost is the bottom right of, the, of each card. And then we'll also be revealing one card from the villain deck each round. So as soon as Peter is back, because I know he wants to see how this is played and have a little fun together, I'll give him a few more minutes to get back. But yeah, so uh, against Goldfinger, the the mission of the game is basically to def to attack and defeat him four different times. His attack value starts at six. So there's four of his cards underneath each with a slightly different effect when you attack him for that value. And then cards that come out will also have a attack or other values because as a spy, we're not always using brute force attacks. Sometimes we have to use our brains or money to pay someone off. So we'll actually end up using some of the star value on our cards to defeat some of the missions and not just use attacks against villains, which will be an interesting new effect that this 007 setup brings us in the legendary lineup. Uh, we're also playing the scheme of Operation Grand Slam. Let me read that off to y'all. So it says that we end up using the Grand Slam mission group. So there are mission cards that we mixed in here based on this scheme card. It tells us how many scheme twists to add in because they have certain effects when they're drawn. Uh, they actually, as they're drawn and laid out, they actually can add, make things in this row more expensive. And then evil wins, which means we lose. If this danger level ever gets to five, we start at danger level zero, beginning of the mission. It's kind of easy going. But as it goes on, it's going to get more difficult, more tricky, more dangerous for us. We'll see if this music keeps up and gets a little more dangerous as we go along. It's a bit of a random mix. Okay, so I won't be needing these four other cards because we didn't select from these. But we did mix in 
the MI6 card into our deck, which we'll be able to draw from the next hand. So, on each turn, we're going to have the villain phase, where we play the top card of the villain deck into this row. Some of those are going to have ambush effects. We'll see what they are. We'll, I'll read them out as they come out. So let's go ahead and start that first turn and see what happens. So we would flip, reveal. This is a scheme twist, which having that as the first card is not always the best option, but we'll play it as it is. So when a scheme twist comes out, attach the twist to the leftmost Q branch. So that means over here, leftmost Q branch, it's going to go right here. And that means that space is irradiated. irradiated. It costs one additional star to recruit a card there. And that stays there for the rest of this game now. The thing is, these cards don't shift down when you purchase something. So if I buy something right there, the new card's going to immediately go on top of it. And then throughout the game, more of these scheme twists can fill up the rest of this row. Okay. So then we do we do any of the villain effects if it says anything. Then action phase. Play, we would play cards from our hand, using them to recruit and defeat villains or complete missions. Now, in this instance, we do not have a villain out to attack. So these two cards right here are kind of worthless. So they're just going to end up being discarded from our hand. Now, we do have four of these cards. That means we have four stars to recruit with. You can buy as many or as few cards as you can afford. So, say I wanted to buy something that cost me two, spend the two, reveal the next card from the deck, and then spend two after that if I could still find something worth two. So, you can kind of mitigate and say, okay, I'm going to buy something cheap, see what else comes out, and then buy my big card, or you can just straight up buy a big card, however you want to do it. So, in this instance, we have a... Uh, we have Tilly Masterson as an ally. Uh, she's guaranteed to attack every time she's played. And then if we play a card that has basically a ranged attack from it, we'd also get one additional attack. Now, currently that would cost me four, three plus the one additional because of the scheme twist. Over here we have the exact same card, just it cost me three. Right here we have Homer. It's a piece of equipment. Uh, to attack and if I play another card with that red swirly symbol I get to draw a card now any card that allows you to cycle your deck while playing a deck builder game is can end up being very powerful if played correctly so that actually wouldn't be bad to get at the beginning of the game we also have this is no time to be rescued uh, it would give you two stars and we get to look at the top card of the hero deck, and you may put it at the bottom. So whenever you play that card, you have the choice to look at that top card and be like, I don't really want to play with that card at all this game. Put it at the bottom of the hero deck, so then you're guaranteed a different card to come out after you buy something new. Or you really like it, you leave it there. So it, it gives you a little bit more planning ahead. We have the tire shredder. Uh, does two attack. Uh, and allows you to KO a hero in your hand. KO anything, be it a hero, a villain, or something or something like that, basically means it's removed from the game. So you no longer use it. Uh, it's out of your deck, out of your hand, out of the game. It just no longer helps or hinders you. Uh, sometimes you'll place it at the top of the board, off the table, wherever you want to place it. But KO, get out. And we already talked about Tilly over here. Now, getting rid of heroes from your hand is actually kind of powerful when you have a lot of lower level stuff. I may not want it quite yet, unless I want to cycle to it faster, really fast, because that is attack every time. Uh, considering I have four to spend, I do like the possibility... Well... I know I'm going to want to buy a lot of cards to get my deck going. So something that gives me 
buying power up front is going to be my strongest option. So spending two of these cards. So I've played all four of these. I'm spending two to get this card that cost me two. Now, that is going to go directly to discard. I cannot use it this turn, and it won't be in my hand next turn. It goes directly to my discard. Now, I still have two left to spend, because I have two of these cards that have one star each. This spot gets immediately refilled. Now, I cannot afford anything, so at this point, it's a, I didn't use it, so I lose it. All those cards get go to my, my personal discard. So if you're playing with multiple people, each person has their own deck of cards that they're playing with. And then from here, I draw one, two, three, four, five, six cards at the end of my turn. Now, if there's multiple players, it passes the next player. They would go through the same thing. Villain card, play their cards, buy, fight as they choose. Single player, I just repeat the process by myself. So I'm going to see what I got. Okay, so in this instance, I have, I'm going to end up with two attacks, three of those, and then I also have the, the MI6 card. MI6 gives me one purchasing power, and allows me to look at the top card of my personal deck. If it costs zero, I can discard it, and then draw a card. So that helps you cycle your deck past the cards of these starter cards to get to attempt to find the cards that you've been purchasing. So in this instance, before I can play any of these cards, I do have to start the round by drawing a villain card. Now this villain card is Bonita special little card from Goldfinger. See how well we can read that. Uh, Bonita can't be fought while there is a card next to her on assignment. So on assignment is this whole row. So if she's alone, pretty easy to deal with her. There's anyone else there. You can't attack her because she's being protected. She has a bodyguard somehow. And she has two star and that star basically tells you hey read the card make sure if anything else is going on because sometimes it's not that value but right now she's just a two not too hard to defeat so we've revealed the villain and now we can go play our cards so i think what i want to do i'm going to start my turn by playing the mi6 card so that allows me to draw the one card i had in my deck I'm going to reveal it. It's a zero cost. That allows me to discard it. I may discard it. And then... Well, I, I could discard it. But actually, I want I want the purchasing power. Because I, remember, I only have... I have, what, three of these this turn? That'll give me four. And that lets me draw a card. Now, at this point, I've drawn all my cards from my deck. So i got to take everything in my discard. Currently, at this point, when I need to draw and shuffle it. So you only shuffle your discard as soon as you need to start drawing again. I'm going to take that discard right here. I'm going to shuffle them. So we start with very few cards at the beginning of the game. As we play the game, your deck's going to double, triple in size, potentially, depending on what you buy, how you use it, if you get rid of cards. A pretty, It's a pretty standard deck building system. Now, if you're new to gaming, uh, deck building is... Essentially, you start with a small deck of cards in some way, and then throughout the game, you are manipulating it and buying cards that add to your deck to increase its size and increase its, uh, I guess you can say, power or abilities throughout the game, depending on what type of game it is. Now, see, so now I've shuffled this my deck. It's, it's a small deck, granted. But because of the card I played, I get to draw another card. So currently, I've played that one. That does leave me with one point to spend. Now let's look at this. I have one, 
two. I actually have three to attack with. Currently the villain. And the on assignment row is at two attack. So I'm going to use two of those attacks. Set them aside, saying I've used them. They will go to my discard, but not until the end of the turn. Those two attack defeat this villain. Because her special power is not active because there's no one next to her. So that when you defeat something, it goes into your personal victory pile. If it was a multiplayer game, you can play it as competitive, scoring points to see who did the most damage or dealt with the most villains or finished the most missions. All of these have points and a small red bubble on the side. One player game. I'm just going to make a single stack off to the side of the board up here at the top so you can see everything I've finished. So I would have one more attack. I'm going to set that aside because there's nothing to attack at this point. So I still have one to spend. It's one, two, three, four. I have a total of five to spend. Remember I can buy as many or as few cards as I choose. And when you buy a card, you immediately replace it. So I could choose to buy, say, the three cost card. Immediately replace it. And hopefully something that costs two comes out. Which, based on the card I bought before, knowing it had a red symbol on it, both of these cards would synergize really well with that to help me keep up with all the villains that are going to come out. And it lets me cycle my deck for the draw, draw card. So I'm actually going to spend three of my five on that. Set it aside. It's going to go to my discard. I can't use it this turn or next turn unless next turn I had to shuffle and then draw somehow drew it. So I'm going to set three of those stars aside because I know I, I know I spent them reveal the next card they're all too expensive now so the next two are wasted all go to discard and I draw six cards which is the rest of my deck at this point so I know I'm gonna to get to the draw soon so when it's a smaller deck you're gonna cycle faster you can get to play these cards you're buying a lot faster as well so, so let's see what I found I got one of my double O agent attacks Looks like I'm going to have a lot of purchasing power because of what I drew. I have four of my 007 agents. And I also drew that first card I bought, which guarantees me two extra spending power. And it would allow me to look at the top card of the hero deck and determine if I want to leave it there or put it at the bottom. So for the start of the next round... Hey Jess, how are you doing? A drive-by hi. Hope you're, I am having a great Monday. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope your Monday has been great as well. Uh, let me know what you're up to today. If you're, I can't remember if you're streaming today, or I know there's a lot of other people streaming as well. But I do appreciate that you you jumped in and said hi. Uh, as you can see, I'm playing Legendary James Bond, deck building game, 007, on assignment, trying to deal with Goldfinger and his master plan. So at the beginning of the round, we do reveal one card from the villain deck. So this is a Master Strike card. When a Master Strike card comes out, we check what the Master Mind has to say about it. So in this instance, let's read what it says. So starting with me and continuing around the table. So in this case, it's just me. Modding other streams today, going on stream. Welcome to New, New Las Vegas on Wednesday. Awesome. Well, I do hope all of the modding went well and that you have a chance to relax because I know it was a busy weekend for you and you did amazing as part of the TLN. I didn't get to watch it all, but I did at least get to lurk a bit. Which Bond am I playing as? Uh, yeah, I guess technically you can say it is him. Um, this setup is for uh, the Goldfinger game, uh, movie uh, timeline. Uh, but this whole game gives you, I believe it was four different 
bond scenarios you can play through and then once you play them all you can kind of mix and match as you choose but i'm doing kind of the the first game setup which actually has you play against goldfinger which being a classic movie uh this is no it's not pierce it's um what sean connor i need to know my bonds better oh those the kind words are well deserved jess you're you're wonderful at streaming i unfortunately don't get to watch or catch your streams enough but it's been working out on fridays that you're streaming kind of same time and longer so i get to raid into you now which has been fun nice and relaxing before i have to do other things on fridays <coughs> but i'm working on i've been streaming enough now i now need to get my follower count up so i can let people get channel points so they can redeem them for special actions i'm so close <laughs> Uh, but yeah, if you have questions about the game, or if you want to just chit-chat, all for it. That's what it's all about here. We're just hanging out, playing games, spreading joy. No rush on how we play, but this being a one-player setup, I let chat kind of help me determine my moves if they choose. So I just kind of talk them through the, the hand of cards I have. And then what's on the table, and they can help me choose and decide and help me b beat the scenario together. Okay, so Master Strike, I. Where was I? Yeah, like. While, while subs are cool, it's like the channel points are what I'm looking forward to the most as a streamer. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah, y'all can redeem making me dr drink water or whatever, but. Like, I have. I have a parrot onesie. I can have y'all spend points to make me wear on stream or something like it's gonna be so much fun <laughs> okay um let's see so i'm supposed to discard their highest cost card in my hand well unfortunately that means that card right there has to be discarded and that is one master strike for the game uh, which i'll have to leave here because it's based on number that have been revealed during the game so yeah if, if there's certain channel point redemption things you think i should add to my channel let me know because we'll be, hopefully sometime soon i can start setting those up like i'm my followers on the 30 something count so it's it's not too far away from having enough okay so master strike happened And then we play our cards. So we have one attack value. Not enough for the mastermind, which needs six or more. No villains out right now. So I'm just going to have four stars to spend on recruiting something to my deck. And like we talked about, this seem tw uh, scheme twist causes anything in this row of, or column of the Q branch to always cost one additional. So instead of three, this is four, three, three, four, and three. Uh, this new card that came out was all square from James Bond on the golf course, uh, which gives one recruit and one attack at the same time. And then it has a special ability based on if you play another card with the same symbol. Got to do more self-promotion. I know it can be <laughs> it does help to get more followers. Yeah, I probably need to be posting more during the week as well. I typically just post like the day before my each of my streams. Um, but yeah, I gotta really get out there and cross promote to as many different channels as possible. It's but it's also making sure I don't step on any toes on any of the groups that don't want you doing too much of that. So finding the right way to do it. But as long as I'm having fun doing it, it's, I'm not in a rush to be huge. It's I'm doing this for for the fun of it. So and just like I said, playing the games and spreading the joy. But if it's one person in chat or twenty, I wouldn't make a difference to me. I'm I'm happy either way. But yeah, I definitely need to work on that cross pr promotion setup. 
Uh, what do I want to buy? I think... So I've been buying stuff like this that allows me to draw cards. Gives me extra attacks. Yeah, I'm going to get another homer. I just spent all four of these. This I can't really use. That's discard. Goes to my discard. And now I draw six more cards for the end of the turn. Let's see what I got. One, two, three. Okay, so I'm going to have three attacks for sure. To recruit with the basic starter 007s and then one of my homer just came out okay i do need to immediately refill this branch and we've finished up the round i discarded drew cards and so at the beginning of the next round we draw another villain card this is the fort knox assault team henchman uh, it is a four value attack when we fight them, we get one additional recruit. Which is perfect timing, because I do have quite a bit of fight in my hand. So I'm going to use this card to fight. Plus one, plus two, four total fight. Set those aside. Those will end up going to my discard at the end of the turn. That automatically defeats this card, which I'll show you right here. Now, so when we fight, we get two additional recruit, which we get to add to the two recruit. We already have so for a total of three recruit for this turn. This card itself is going to go to the, the victory defeat pile, which will add points for the end of the game. So with three total to spend, I do have one extra attack I'm not going to end up using. So what days do I normally stream? Um, oh yeah, we definitely do need to collapse soon. Yeah, um, so... Right now, Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern is when I do my uh, Meeple Monday gaming stream, where I typically try to play something where chat can choose my moves or play along at home, kind of like I've done Sagrada, I've done some Rollin' Rights, um, and then Fridays at 6 p.m. Eastern has, has been my unboxing the week, where I hang out with chat and they help me choose a game to unbox from my collection of too many games i've not played yet that are still in shrink and then tuesday nights i'll be streaming with the charity board gamer at 9 p.m eastern we're starting a DD &D campaign um i don't know how long that's going to run but we're going to be playing about two hours every tuesday and then typically thursday nights with the charity board gamer he has and after the show game at 8.30 p.m. Eastern that I co-host with him. And that is my current streaming schedule. So two nights on my own, at least two nights with him, occasionally on Saturday. But if there's certain times that either work for both of us that we're both typically would be streaming or an off time that one of us would like to join the other's channel, I'd be more than happy to collab and do something together. So feel free to shoot me ideas. I'm more than happy to try something out. I blanked on where it was. Okay, so one recruit plus two recruit. That's three total for the round. And I will get... Uh, the all square card for my discard. When you buy something, it goes directly to. Okay, so Monday to th Thursday, I stream. Technically, yes. Um, yeah, uh, Wednesday nights are typically a no go because I typically have game night with Chelsea. Uh, but on occasion, I could, pr if if it's planned enough in ahead, I could probably do Wednesday night. Um. Yeah, but typically, when, yeah, like I, I've, I've, I look back and I'm like, man, I'm always busy. How am I so busy? But yeah, um, we can try Wednesday night soon. Uh, we'll just have to plan it ahead. And then I can tell Chelsea I'll have to take a week off from regular game night. Because we're actually like 20, 25 minutes away. We can 
and we have such small bubbles we do in-person gaming in May June uh yeah for sure um I'll definitely let me look, verify the calendar because there's a week or two I'm traveling doing some other stuff and I don't want to overbook myself but yes definitely I'll, I'll look at the calendar and I'll get back to you on that uh, so yeah think about a game you would want to try to do and we will set that up because we keep talking about collabing and then we do like we're like oh yeah we should we should let's do it so I'll get back to you on the best Wednesday or I'll give you a couple options and we'll set that up Okay, so I used my recruit for that turn. No more, nothing else to attack. Those all go to discard. I draw six cards. There's only three to draw, so I shuffle my discard and draw three more. Now, Peter was in here earlier talking and chatting along, and he, had to, he said he had to step away. I wonder where he went off to. But he's the one I, I really need to get on stream one day like he constantly talks about he doesn't want to be on video doesn't want to be on screen because he doesn't like to be on stage but yeah I'll, I'll definitely send you a DM on discord and we'll chat and, and iron out some details um, but yeah we'll definitely make that happen I appreciate you verifying and because I've been so busy I keep forgetting to actually reach out but yes sounds like a great plan but I do appreciate you stopping by I don't know how long you get to hang out but however long you get to hang out is much appreciated so we shuffle and draw so we have six cards and it's drunk physics yes there are definitely a lot of versions of legendary and Jess uh, heading out got a good dinner good luck uh, I appreciate you stopping by Jess um, I do hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Enjoy your dinner, and thank you for the the wishes of luck. Um, and Drunk Physics, how are you today? Um, uh, how was your weekend? Did you do anything special? Play any new games? So yes, we are playing Just Watching Winter Soldier. Uh, and Falcon series, yeah. So I keep hearing about that. I'm kind of one of those ones that kind of cut the ties on all the streaming stuff. So I'm like, yep, y'all have fun watching it. I won't be watching it for a while because I save money that way because I spent too much money on board games. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I think I also had gotten to a point where like I watched a few too many superhero movies and kind of almost got burned out so I stepped away from watching some of that stuff for a while which I'm, I'm sure it, it's really enjoyable to watch nothing against it just personally it wasn't I had to step away uh, but yeah as far as legendary yeah there's so many versions which speaking of superheroes one of the most well-known ones is Marvel legendary um, James the James Bond one came out in 2019 uh, this is one to five players. Plays a lot the same as I'm not sure which versions you've played before, but we have the masterminds. But this really sets up the stories from the different uh, James Bond movies that you can play against. And so we're actually playing against Goldfinger. And then, like, so, of course, we have all uh, special equipment and weapons and vehicles and allies from the James Bond storyline. The alien one, the most. Nice. Definitely. Yeah, for... I found the biggest hiccup in the Legendary games is setup. Because there's so... I guess so many choices and you have to do so much shuffling and then dividing it back out whenever you play. Like, if you're not used to it... The setup time it can be a, a major hindrance to want to play um but i found some of the stories work really well i feel this was probably my first deck builder game and so while it's 
I wouldn't say it's the best, it's it's definitely stuck with me the most in style. For a while, I, d I had the Alien one. I had the like some of the Lord of the Rings ones. Hob I think there's a Hobbit one. Um, and like, and I was, I got like the Marvel villains ones where you actually play like, they mix it up where you play as the villains and trying to thwart the superheroes coming through town. Um, but yeah, I, this is my first time trying the James Bond one, which I, f I find that this, the storyline is interesting because you actually set up the villain stick a certain way. It's not just like mixing a couple of henchmen. It's, there's it progresses through the storyline like the movie so you can see certain missions like act one act two act three just like the movies would have been so so far it's definitely interesting and i i grew up watching some of the the james bond stuff with my dad and this especially goldfinger one being one of the iconic stories it's i'm enjoying it for at least the story itself even though the the gameplay is very straightforward and simple uh so i drew my hand this round we gotta draw another villain and this is odd job of course classic odd job and he is a four attack value but he has an ambush effect i'm going to show it on here hopefully you can read it a little bit easier uh each player gains a wound so when we gain a wound we take one of these wounds place it in our discard pile which my discard and draw deck are slightly off screen. You can kind of see them down here. But those runes just basically hinder your, your hands and your deck because they do nothing for you. There are some ways you can get rid of them by basically essentially wasting a turn doing nothing while they're in your hand to get rid of some wounds. So that's not fun to get that right now. He is a four attack value. So far, we've done pretty good at dealing with the attacks as they come out, so nothing has accumulated. But currently, we only have a two attack, and we don't have another card with the red symbol played this turn to give us that extra effect. So we're basically stuck with just recruiting one, two, three, four. F well, let's see what this card does. This one gives us the one recruit, but we get to look at the top card of our deck. If it's a zero cost card, we can just we have the choice to discard it. It's a zero cost. We can either discard this, and then the rest of that card says we get to draw a card. So we could either put this back and draw this into our hand, giving us more recruiting, or we can discard and hope we get more attack. Now I have one or two cards that give me two attack, but I think the chances of having enough to deal with odd job at this point are too low. So I'm going to not discard that, technically put it back, then draw it into my hand. So that two attack is not really going to do much. I'm going to set it aside. It goes to discard at the end of the turn. So we still get one, two, two, six total to, to recruit with this round. Now, I've already bought a... Did I already get an all-square card? Oh, I got the other one. Now, the Tire Shredder gives us extra attack, allowing us to KO hero cards from our hands, which, in turn, could let us get rid of some of the lower-value cards and cycle faster. Where I could get the all-square, which gives us attack and recruiting. Or we can do high recruit. I think I'm going to go for the all square. Give a little bit of balance as we're going to start to have more stuff come out up here. That was three. We reveal the next card and we still have three to spend. Oh, the gold bar that came out a bit early. Equipment. It's worth two recruit. If we play another card with this black symbol on it, which the tire shredder would also have. We would get extra recruit. Which I still have three to spend. I think I want a little bit more attack in the deck, so I'm gonna take this Tilly card that cost me three. 
So that's all six of my recruit for that turn. All those cards go to discard. We clean up. We draw six. Get ready for the next round. See, I've already bought one of those all square cards before. So now I can combo those together. And then I've got three of these attack cards and then one recruit. This next round. Start of the round, we reveal another villain card. This is actually a operation mission card. These, in the same way as villains, get pushed down. If these make it off the board, they raise the threat level or the danger level. In this game, if the danger level level ever gets to five, we automatically lose. Uh, some of these will require recruit uh, value instead of attack value, um, because as a spy, you're not always just using brute force. Sometimes you're using your brains, you're using money to do do your different tasks. Uh, so yeah, but if we do beat him, five total we get three additional attacks, so you can kind of combo into using that mission to do extra damage to something else. So, let's see what I got. Well, we have three attack, plus two. That's five already. Plus six, or plus one more to make six. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um... So, the Mastermind is a 6 plus. Or, yeah. So there could be some effects that give it additional. Let's make sure. Uh, the Master Strikes, so that just takes away. Okay. Let me make sure if the Master Strike adds the one value to the Master Mind. For him. Uh, I don't think it does. Okay. So he's just a straight up six. So I think I want to use my attack value against the mastermind first. If you want to help me decide if I should use my six attack against the mastermind. Or if I should use it, say, against odd job. Or I could use it for this mission. Now, if I use it for the mission, use five of the six. I get three attack in return, still leaving me with four attack to then take out odd job. So I could either deal with the one mastermind, one of the four that I need to defeat to win the game, or I could basically deal with both of these cards in this row. Now, while it's typically a really good idea to take care of the mastermind as soon as you're able, I found if when you can take care of multiple cards in this row at the same time, to go for it to give you breathing room for the future because these will add up really fast if you're not careful so my preference would be to attack here roll over the extra to that one if you agree disagree let me know in chat If you don't really care, we'll move on. It's okay. And let me know if the music volume is too loud or too low tonight. I tried to find some... May not be epic, but it's kind of somatic orche orchestral theme music to go with the, the spy... We're going to have two, two recruits as well. 
which right now the only thing we could afford to recruit would be this is no time to be rescued uh, which would give us to recruit every time we play it and allow us to look at the top of the hero deck which two to spend every time it comes across as opposed to just one of these it's still so I'm, I'm gonna go and do, use the recruit for that that's gonna go to my discard And I'm going to use my attacks. Uh, since I see no word saying not to do it, I'm going to go. So I have my one, two, three, four, five, six. Use five of it here. When, def when succeeding, you get three additional. So I had one remaining after using five. Plus the three is four. That allows me to then take out this one for four. There's no special effect because it had an ambush instead, so I've dealt with odd job as well. That actually deals with all those cards. All those get set aside. End of the round, they get discarded. So then I'm going to draw six more cards again. One, two, three, four. Only four there to draw. So I'm going to shuffle my deck now. See, it is growing now because I'm, I'm recruiting cards almost every turn sometimes multiple cards, building this up faster. So by the end of the game, I'm most likely going to double, possibly triple its size. And then depending if I get cards that help me take cards out of that deck to trim it back down, it will depend on how fast I get back to cards I'm buying, how well they work together. So part of the strategies of these types of games is buying cards that synergize or work really well together and so you can combo them, drawing extra cards, getting extra attacks, extra recruit a lot faster than if you were just playing the basic cards at each hand. Okay, and I get to roll, uh, draw two more cards right there. Done that. So I got a total of six cards. Let's see what we've drawn. So one of the cards I drew was a Ruin card. That basically lets me do nothing with that card. So that leaves me with only five cards to do something with this round. One of them is my double O agent looking down the barrel, one attack. I have three of my double O seven basic recruit cards. And I also have the card I just bought, actually. This is no time to be rescued, which is to recruit. And when I play it, I can look at the top card of the hero deck. Now, before I can play any of those cards, I do have to draw the top card of the villain deck, which in this case is change his luck from Operation Grand Slam. Now, if you've seen the movie, which I'm assuming I'm not spoiling anything as how old this movie is. Remember when Goldfinger is playing cards by the poolside and then Bond happens to get into the hotel room where Goldfinger's assistant is using a, what is it, a telescope binoculars to, to cheat by looking at the other player's cards and then sending signals to Goldfinger on how to bet so Goldfinger would always win and then Bond kind of interrupts that signal and changes it so Goldfinger loses is I can't remember if he says something into the 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 device or what it was but still kind of interesting how they've integrated that into the game so you, you see the hand of cards uh, so this has a negative two recruit for each. Um, so that is the blue kind of distance symbol hero I've played this turn. So any card in the, if it has this blue symbol in the upper left hand corner, I'll show one of these on screen. If it has one of those blue kind of aiming symbols on it that you've played from your hand, it actually makes it cheaper to finish that mission. So this is actually six recruit as opposed to attack because you're using your brain to outsmart them. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm gonna make sure what this, how I can do this. So with the wounds, if I don't recruit any heroes, fight the mess mine, or fight any valens, or complete any missions on my turn, I may KO all the wounds from my hand. That does not say I'm not allowed to play a card for its ability. So I'm going to play this card for its ability by looking at the top card from the hero deck. I may put it at the bottom if I don't like it. So this is one is actually the Jill Masterson. Uh, it would be two recruit, and I may KO wound in any player's discard pile. Now, that's not as strong because not as many wounds have occurred yet. But I do also know that some of these cards that are coming are going to cause more wounds. Either through ambush or other effects. And I also know I've bought at least two cards that that are looking for that mind symbol at the top. So that wouldn't be a bad card to leave at the hero deck to come out next for me to purchase soon. So I'm going to leave it. Now, let's see what I have. I have five total recruit I can use this turn. So I could choose to use it, or I could choose not to, and get rid of that wound. So let's see if there's anything I wanted to buy. I do like the Tire Shredder, and now that there's two of them too, as well. There's two of the Tilly Master Mastersons that are allies, that actually have that aiming symbol that is helpful for that. I have at least one in my deck already. Now I don't get as high recruit as often. Now, what I could do, we know that card I just put at the top of the deck was a two cost card. And we wanted it. So I'm gonna spend three of these recruit, three of my five, on this three value card. That automatically brings this card to the field. We have two left. It costs two. We can recruit it immediately. We've now spent five. All these cards can go to our discard to end the turn. We're going to draw back up to six. And we'll get ready for the next round. So I'll lay these out so you can see what we got here. Two of the 007s. We have our MI6 back, an all square, and two of our Homer beacons, which we can use those together to draw more cards, which will be nice. Okay, so at the beginning of the next round, we're going to draw a card. This is a villain card. Pushes this down, puts that there. This is Melee. Let's read what it says. It's an ambush. So count the number of open on assignment spaces. And play that many cards from the villain deck. Ow. I'm... Ow. I was not expecting that. This is going to be very detrimental. when this happens that's three empty spaces we have to draw three more villain cards which could fill up the on assignment row or bring out more master strikes or scheme cards we're in for a hurt here so number one uh, pursuing cards from Goldfinger uh, chase Let's make sure what that does. Chase is one of the new effects in this legendary set that is not in most of the other sets. So let's verify what Chase does. So with the Chase, 
represents the many cars, boats, and other vehicles Bond has chased or been chased by each turn. After you're done playing a card from the villain deck, but before you can start playing heroes from your hand, a villain or mission with the chase will automatically move one space, pushing other cards as normal. This move happens whether the card will, was, with the chase was pushed by another card this turn or not. The card will move this way on the turn it first entered on assignment. So, this means we're going to play two more cards. And then, this card with chase is going to push and chase down the row. So we hope a master strike or scheme happens otherwise we're definitely losing an operation okay so we still have two more of these to draw well it's a villain this is odd job again and when odd job moves the active player gains a wound Whew. so he's going to go right there coming out does not count as moving but if he's pushed He's moving. So this next card could move him, causing me to take a wound and causing a lot more issues. We're getting in deep now. This is went from double O easy to double O crud. Okay, Master Strike. This I was hoping something like this came out because it's going to actually help us so we master strike there's two of those now and when master strikes happen this starting with myself and if there's additional players we'd go around the table and we discard cards for each master strike played this game and we have to discard our highest uh, cost card in hand since i'm alone that means i'm gonna have to discard two cards of my the highest cost value from my hand can't use them this turn uh it's gonna hurt this happens automatically so let's see what values i have i have cost three 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 zero 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 so i do have the choice of which ones of these to get rid of i'm looking at three recruit here that's two attack two attack one oh one and one So, almost no matter what, I cannot deal enough damage to anything in the villain row. So, I'm better off keeping the all square card. So, I have one additional recruit. And then I can, at, at minimum, get a tire shredder or until he ma masters him so we can deal with these cards that are going to go fast yeah i'm going to do that i think well i do have my mi6 just gonna let me look at the top card of the deck you know what it's, we're gonna have to risk it Yeah, I'm going to get rid of the all square and one homer. Okay, so that was the three cards triggered by melee. And now, so nice thing is nothing else is pushing, but the chase pushes. So these get pushed forward like that. And now we can begin to play cards. It's the very first thing I'm going to do. So now I have two of those. I'm going to play my MI6, which lets me look at the top card of my deck. If it's a zero, I can discard it and then draw a card. Okay, well, not the worst, not the best. But we can at least do something here. So, we're going to have a total of four recruit and three attack. I'm going to deal with melee right now. 
gives, gives us some breathing room. Uh, no extra effect when you t deal with her, but she's off the board. Not likely going to push this off now. I have four recruit. I've talked about it. And I got that gold bar, which needs the same symbol as the tire shredder. So I'm going to take the tire shredder for some more attack as well. It's four recruit. That's all my cards. All my spending values. Replace the card here. Draw six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's lay out where we pulled for. Okay, so we're going to have some attacks. That'll be nice. Okay, well, we're going to have at least, what, five attacks? Okay. That'll help us. Won't be perfect, but we'll survive. A little bit longer, at least. So, beginning of the next round, we draw a villain card. This is another operation. It does push Odd Job, and because Odd Job moved, we gain a wound, which goes directly to our discard pile. Um, and then that moved into that. They didn't technically shift that, but before we can play any cards, Chase automatically pushes forward. Any card with the Chase symbol or Chase wording on it. So that's going to give us more issues if we're not careful. So I, I, my thought is to deal with that first. Okay, so I'm going to, well, I'm not going to be able to combo these together because they don't have the same symbols. But I'm still going to get one, two, three, four, five attack deal with the car chase it is no more we have a little bit of breathing room on that one use the ability this is no time to be rescued to look at the top card of the of the hero deck and I have the choice to put it on the bottom this is another homer beacon and I feel I have enough of those I'm going to put that at the bottom hopefully I can find some more unique equipments to show off and play with I do have three totally recruit. This Goldfinger at Golf mission, I can only use recruit uh, value cards that cost zero. So this, these two recruit could not be used towards it, and I need at least three. So I'm just going to use a three towards something down here. I'm thinking another Tilly to combo with the Tilly I already have would be helpful. Let's go. I go to draw cards. I have one to draw, so I shuffle before finishing my draw. Now we're getting close to halfway through the game. Um, at the bottom of the villain deck is an inevitable card that kind of starts to trigger the end of the game. Remember, our mission is to beat the mastermind four times before the danger level reaches five. If the inevitable happens and we go through that without defeating the mastermind, but also the danger does not reach the five, it is considered a draw game. Okay, so I'm gonna finish drawing. Two, four, five for a total of six. And we'll see what we got ready. Okay, so we have a wound right there. We actually have two wounds. Okay, that's going to be hard to deal with. We have our tire shredder allowing us to carry our hero from our hand. A single attack on that one and two of those. And we do have to draw another one. Well, should have refilled this. A duck snorkel equipment. We have to draw a villain card. This is a scheme twist. So with the scheme twist, as per the scheme, 
We attach the twist to the leftmost Q branch space that does not have one yet. And this space is irradiated, making anything in that space cost one additional recruit point. So that's going to go right here. Leftmost that does not have one yet. So now both of these two have scheme twist on them. They now make this three a four and this four a five. But fortunately, Odd Job did not move. Did not give us an additional wound, so we're kind of fortunate in that regard. Now I only have two recruit, three total attack. If I, I could use the ability on this to KO a hero in my hand. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play this for its ability, which I could still use its attack, but I don't it's not enough for anything out here. I'm gonna KO. One double O agent basic starter card out of the game. KO out. And then I'm going to use the special ability on the wound cards that if I don't recruit any heroes, I don't defeat a, a villain, I don't fight the mastermind, and I don't complete an operation mission, I can KO wounds from my hand. So since I have two wounds in my hand, I'm not going to recruit, I'm not going to fight. I'm going to get rid of both those wounds automatically. Out of my hand, out of my deck. Feels really good. And that's going to be my turn. And I'll draw six more to end that turn. So let's see what we're going to get to play with next turn. So we're going to have our basic recruit. We're going to have some fights. More recruits and our Jill Masterson. Okay. Next round, we're gonna reveal this card. That's gonna push both of those forward. That goes to there because our job moved. We get a wound, which is okay because it's perfect time for Jill Masterson to have showed up because she helps deal with the wounds in our discard pile, which is where that wound just went. So I'm going to for sure play her for that ability and KO wound from any player's discard pile. So that wound I just got is gone. It's gone. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, have a total of five recruit to deal with. Now, I, I could use these three to deal with this this operation, which would be helpful to prevent odd job from moving as easily. Where I have five total, I could get something like I could get the duck snorkel, uh, put a card from my discard pile at the bottom of my deck. It's not a bad option. I could get another tire shredder, an oil slick. Uh, the oil slick is a little too much to afford right now. Or I could get the front. Wing gun, machine guns, uh, two, two attack and get two attack, that, uh, get plus two attack that can only be used to find henchmen. So if I was fighting something like, say, Fort Knox, it'd be actually like four attack. But I think I want to deal with that operation. The three of that deals with that operation. I still have two recruit, two attack left. Not quite enough for anything, so I'm just gonna end up discarding those. Not a big deal. It'll be okay. Let's go to my discard. Draw six more cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hopefully soon I can start getting where these cards work together for me. Ooh. Okay, so now I'm getting a lot of the cards I've been buying. Hopefully. I can chain these. That would be fun. Okay, next round. We're going to draw a card. Master Strike. Of course. So I'm going to have to discard cards from my hand. Starting with the highest value cards. I have to do it three times because there's been three Master Strikes. So let's see the value of my cards. I have three, 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 and three. And zero. So... Five of these cards 
are all the same value. I'll have to get rid of three of them. So let's see which ones I can combo together well. Well, if I kept both the homers, I'd get four guaranteed attack and draw a card at, at bare minimum. If I kept both my all squares, I could give a mission or villain an on assignment negative two recruit or attack this turn. And together, both of those would give me two, two, so I'd be three. Would that be enough attack though? That would be two attack. Well, I could deal with that one to get four to that. So near grant here, I can deal with odd job. I deal with that, there's only two. I think I want to risk it and go all square by discarding my gold bar and both of my homers. Okay, so now I can actually play cards. I'm going to start by playing my first all square, giving me one attack, one recruit. Now, when I play my second one, it's a bit, special ability can trigger because I've played one card with that symbol already on it. So that means I get the two recruit, two attack, Plus, I can give a mission or a villain on assignment, negative to recruit or attack this turn. So that means I could give odd job negative to attack, making him a four. I could make, uh, make the changes of luck from a six to a four, but I still only have three total. But I could make this Fort Knox team henchman, it's typically a three. A one. I have two to spend on him. He's out. When you fight him, you get one additional recruit, giving me four total recruit. And with that, I am going to pick up one additional tire shredder. Discarding the rest of the cards, drawing six as has become the standard. Another hero. A true classic. Okay, so let's see what we're gonna get to play with next round. Quite a few bot cards. We do have two of our, our generic basic starter 007s. We have our MI6. We're gonna have a Tilly, which will be helpful because we also have some more recruiting with both of our. This is no time to be rescued. So we're definitely gonna have enough to deal with the mission, Operation Grand Slam, that's been sitting out there for a while. Which, perfect time for that music to get a bit more hype. So let's get one more villain card out. So, use the transmitting device. Um, so, this can't be completed unless the mastermind has been defeated at least once. Okay, so it would be a four attack, but requires us to deal with the mastermind at least once, which we have not done yet. We're, really, we need to do it four times, so we do need to get on top of that. So first, before I do anything, I'm going to use the MI6 special ability to look at the top card of my deck. And if it costs zero, I can have it discarded. It is not zero, so it's not discarded. It just goes back, but I also get to draw a card. Well, I'm going to draw that card that I just looked at. Sounds great to me. And that currently gives me one recruit value. And this is perfect because I've actually triggered... I'm going to be able to combo some cards now. First, I'm going to do this. I'm going to play This Is No Time To Be Rescued, giving me two more recruit, and look at the top card of the hero deck. Now I have the choice to put it at the bottom. So it's another Tilly. I think we have enough of those. I'm going to put that at the bottom. I'm actually going to play another one of the exact same cards. Allow me to do the exact same thing again. And this time it is an oil slick. Cost of six. And give a villain uh, this that move this turn. Negative three. Attack. 
and I'd be doing three attack whenever I play it. It's a solid choice. Um, we already have one out on the field. It's really expensive to buy. I think I don't want that. Because if I'm going to buy it, I, one's enough. So I'm currently sitting at five recruit. And then... I'm going to play Attili Masterson, which is worth two attack. Play an additional Tilly Masterson, which is also worth two attack, but because the first Tilly had the aiming symbol, I get one additional attack. So we're at five attack and five recruit already. I'm going to stack those a little bit easier. Plus two more recruit. So we're at seven recruit, five attack. Now, if we look at this, this operation right here gets negative two recruit value needed for each of the aim heroes I've played this turn, which I played two. So that's negative four, it makes it only cost two recruit to deal with. So I'm gonna just set these two aside, like those are the ones that dealt with it. That is off the table. We have completed that operation. Leaving us with five recruit and five attack still remaining. Now, unfortunately, we do need at least six attack to deal with odd job. Six attack to deal with the mastermind. And we cannot deal with this operation until we've dealt with the mastermind at least once. So we need to... Unfortunately, all the attacks we just had aren't really worth as much. But they did kind of swing into our favor for the operation, leaving us five recruit to spend. Which I, I kind of want this duck snorkel. This duck snorkel uh, will allow us to put a card from our discard pile on the bottom of our deck. Which comes really in handy when our deck is really low. And we want a specific card and we're about to play something. Let's just draw a card or something. Play that, put it there, draw the card, put it in our hand. It's kind of a quick grab a card we need type thing. So I can use that together. Plus it's quite a decent amount of attack. So I'm going to buy that for the five. Or recruit it for five. That's all I can do that turn. Everything to discard. Draw the one card I have. I'm going to start shuffling. So we have done a good job at dealing with operations and keeping the danger level from increasing. Unfortunately, we have not dealt with the mastermind. So Goldfinger has stayed quite out of our reach at the moment, but we will get to a point where he will not last much longer. We will corner him. We will take care of him. We'll wait till he thinks he has us trapped and he'll reveal his secret plan. And then it will show up at Fort Knox and thwart him. Okay, so we need to draw five more cards for a total of six. Gonna lay those out for you. MI6. Okay, we got a, a good variety of cards here. They may not really combo together as well, but we'll see what happens. Well, looks like a lot of recruit at least. Okay, beginning of the round. Villain card. Scheme twist. That's going to go left most of the queue branch, making things more expensive as the game goes on. Not as fun to deal with, but it is what it is. Okay. Well, the nice thing is we didn't get another vil uh, villain. We didn't have odd job move, so no more wound. Which we could have dealt with because we did have Jill Masterson come out. So she's just going to be worth two recruit. So let's go and just play that. Set it aside. Two recruit right there. Next up, we have. This is no time to be rescued. And we're going to look at the top card of the hero deck again. Another Jill Masterson. Uh, I don't really want another one of those. To the bottom, you go. Okay. 
And then let's do this card next. MI6. Uh, I'm gonna look at the top card of my deck. Cost zero or discard otherwise goes back. And then I would get to draw a card. So I get to do this no time to rescue it again. Let's look. Another tire shredder. I don't want another one of those. I have enough. Let's put it to the bottom. Okay. So that was done. We're currently sitting at what, six, seven. Seven recruit already. And then I'm going to have the gold bar. That gives me a two recruit. And if I had played another one with this symbol on it, I would get one additional recruit, but did not. So I do not get that additional recruit. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total recruit. Which can only be spent in this row because no operation currently needs recruit. And then we have three total attack, which is not enough for anything. So those are essentially discarded, not as useful this round. But with nine to spend, I can start getting some more expensive stuff. Yeah, I think I definitely need some more attack, and I'm really liking a true classic. It's going to cost me eight, which I have nine to spend. I can only just buy the, this then. It's only two attack, but every time I play it, I get to gain a hero from the Q branch for free. Straight up free card to recruit every turn I play this. And if it's a vehicle, I get to put it directly into my hand, which there's at least two vehicle cards sitting in the in the Q branch at this moment. So I think that sounds like a great plan. It's going to go directly to my discard. I have one more to spend. Probably won't blow up anything that cheap. All to discard. Draw six. We'll draw what we got. Okay, seeing a few basics. And it looks like we might have a few we can combo together at least. Which will be fun. Okay. So, beginning of the round, draw a villain card. It's another operation. Now this operation, a uh, spy on Yurk Enterprises, Operation Grand Slam. Uh, this has a negative two recruit value for each red hero or red symbol hero, uh, basically this red symbol right here, that I play this turn. Would start at 8 recruit for every one of those that I play, it drops it by 2. Which could have a nice effect and easy to deal with. So let's see how I can combo these cards. So I'm going to start by playing my duck snorkel. It allows me to put a card from my discard pile on the bottom of my deck. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that card that I just bought a while ago, the true classic. Since my, my discard's pretty small right now, it's going to be a while before I can shuffle. I'm going to take that card, I'm going to put it at the bottom of my deck. So I can draw and get to it a lot faster now. Guaranteeing to see it before I shuffle. Okay. And that's also going to be for the attack that I'll be able to use. Next up, I'm going to play my Homer Beacon. It's worth two attack. But because I've already played another red symbol, I get to draw a card. Which I can deal with. Okay. So I currently have five attack. I'm going to just add this one. So six total attack. Which perfect time to deal with odd, uh, well I could either deal with odd job so he doesn't move doesn't give wounds or I could just go directly at the mastermind which I feel we need to do because we need to do that to deal with the other operation 
and we need to do it four times total. So I'm going to deal with the Mastermind. So let's see what, what the Mastermind triggers. I still have other cards to play, but I'm going to deal with six attack against the Mastermind. So what we do, there's four of these Mastermind cards. We take one at random and see what it says. So, Mr. Solo's pressing engagement. Um, so when we fight, I get to draw two, f uh, draw two fewer cards at the end of the turn. So unfortunately, next round I'll have less cards to d to use. But it is what it is. I have now dealt with one mastermind. By doing so, that allows me to also deal with this operation in the future. Okay, so now the rest of the cards that I can play. I'm going to set all of these aside. Keep the Yugi's in the corner to show that I played them, but I've used their abilities. Next up, I have my all square card. It gives me one recruit and one attack. Uh, if I had played another one of the yellow symbol cards, I could use extra, but I didn't. Not a problem. I still have the one attack. It's not going to be enough. Not a big deal. But I do have four total of recruit now. Now this is important because I've played two red cards, two red symbols. And this new new operation that came out is for each of those red symbol cards that I've played this turn, it reduces this card's value by two, two recruit. So instead of eight, this has now become four recruit to deal with. And I have four in my hand. So that operation has now been completed. Thank you very much. That's how a spy does its work. It's not always about brute force. Now, because I did complete and defeat that mastermind, it did say I get two less cards drawn at the end of the turn, which means I'm going to have four cards instead of six. Fair enough. I'll deal with the consequences of what I've done. I got caught. He paraded me around thinking he's going to get me back, but I'll deal with him first. Uh, we do draw the next villain card. It's another Master Strike. This is where it becomes tricky, tricky. Ah, because for each of those, uh, starting with me and continuing with me because I'm playing solo, I have to discard cards of the highest uh, cost in hand until one card has been discarded for each of Master Strikes, which there are four of. You know what that means. All four of my cards get discarded automatically at the beginning of this round. And I get to do nothing with them. So all four of those go directly to my discard. Now, that would complete the villain step to where I could then go on to my actions. I have no cards in my hand to do, perform actions with, so I go to the cleanup phase where I discard any unused cards and draw back up to six. So I'm just going to draw six cards, and that is the round. A little unfortunate that I got to do nothing that turn, but it's better than only having one or two cards. It just moves it forward. It feels somewhat balanced that it happened that way. Kind of the timing of it was kind of fun. Now, I do have now have four of my basic 007 starters for one recruit each. I found my tire shredder and my all square card. So, beginning of the round, we're going to draw another villain. This is another operation. And this operation is... No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. So, at the end of the turn... Oh, so at the end of the turn, KO the hero in the Q branch space below this card. Then KO all copies of that hero everywhere in Q branch. In the hero deck, and among all cards the players own. Then shuffle the hero deck and each player's deck. So that means, at the end of this turn, he's going to destroy the gold bar. That also means... Every gold bar in the game is destroyed if I don't deal with him. So 
So on the bright side, I only have one gold bar in my deck. But as he goes along, he's going to start destroying more and more different cards. And that that gets rid of vehicles and equipment and allies that I could be using that I can no longer have. So this is going to be get very difficult very quick. He's right. He does expect me to die. Okay, so let's see what I can do with it then. Well, I have the four recruit. Uh, two attack. And I may KO a hero from my hand. I have an all square for one and one. So I only have three total attack. Uh, let's see, do let's see, so with that, I could have a total of five to spend. Let's see what's out there. Question comes: Do I want that other gold bar? Mm. At this point, I feel like I need more attack value than recruit, so it's not as detrimental if that gold bar disappears from my overall deck since I only have one of them. So I think what I could do, spending the five, of course. I could I'm actually gonna use the tire shredder to KO here for my hand. I'm gonna get actually get rid of one of these guys. So then I can cycle my deck deck a little bit faster than it was moving. I still have four to spend. And I'm going to purchase Tilly Masterson, which would be three. Scheme Twist Hunter makes it four. It's going to go directly to discard. New card goes on top of that. Ooh, smuggled gold. Okay, so when the smuggled gold extra cards appear, we attach it to Goldfinger. If it's attached to a Mastermind, the Mastermind gets a plus one. So now that, that has now made Gold uh, Goldfinger a seven instead of six. And we've built another card. She's covered in paint. Okay. So that was my turn. Three attack is not enough for anything in the field. Discords. Draw one, two. Shuffle my discard. And I'm also going to have to get rid of that gold bar. From there. Oh, let's make sure it's not here. Yeah, yeah. Stop shuffling and I have to get rid of it from my deck. And then I'll shuffle again. Okay. So this card is going to force me to, at the end of the turn, KO the hero in the Q branch. You need this card. KO all copies of that. Throw everywhere in the Q branch, the hero deck, and among all cards the players own. And shuffle and shuffle. So, what we do, I have to get rid of that gold bar this gold bar. I'm already shuffling my deck anyway. But I will have to search through that whole hero deck for gold bars. No more.
Okay. Two, six total cards. Let's find all the gold bars. And another, and another. There we go. All those are now out of the game. I have to shuffle the hero deck now. Because I just saw what was in it. I saw where things were in it. Shuffle it, so I don't know what's coming up. We will have to replace that gold bar from that hero row as well. But it already took out the gold bar, not what's coming back out. And which, on the bright side, is that gold bar was not as effective for me. And at this point in the game, it's not as critical to have. It actually narrows this draw debt down to something that's going to be more useful for me. So, for example, the shoes covered in paint. If I don't want that card or any copies of it, I can intentionally let it KO to then push on to other cards that I find more valuable. So let's see what comes out. Uh, passenger ejector seat vehicles, gold finger. Now I do have to draw a new villain card. This is the dropped Derby. So this does advance all of these. Because our job moved, we will receive another wound to our discard pile. Now let's see what we have to play. Uh, that dropped derby has a fight, so when we fight them, it has a special effect. Okay, I see what that does. So we're going to have two basic starters, or actually three. One basic fight. So these cards I'm going to be playing in order. First I get this one, gain a hero from the Q branch for free. So that means any of these five cards I can take into my, take it for free. If it's a vehicle card, which one, two, three are, any of those three would immediately go to my hand so I can immediately play it. Two attack, three attack, I have four. Okay, here we go. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the passenger ejector seat because it's a vehicle it goes to my hand which allow me to play it this turn give me four five more attack that's a really good card to get because it's also eight value I got for free there we go and then next I'm gonna play my all square card now this gives me one additional recruit and one attack but also, since I've already played one of the yellow symbol cards, I gain a, it allows me to give a mission or villain on assignment up here. Negative two recruit or negative two attack this turn. So currently I'm sitting with what? One plus two, three, eight, nine total attack. So what I'm gonna use it for 
to slow down the on assignment stuff going on and really help myself out here. Yeah, I'm going to use the special ability of negative two attack under this one. Use five of that attack. So now this is a five to just take that out of effect now. So it can't KO any more types of cards. I still have four attack left. Deal with this operation, which I need to at least deal with one mastermind first, which I've done. That's all my attack values, but I still have one, two, three, four recruit left. So let's see if I, what, if anything, I want to recruit. Should have automatically replaced that. So a total of six, five, seven, five, and four. You know what? Another tire shredder wouldn't be bad to start getting rid of that those low value cards out of my deck now a lot faster and I can synergize those black symbols I'll buy that for four that's all I can do replace that uh, smuggled gold now that means gold finger is going to be eight to attack six cards A lot of different cards to deal with their effects. They're not going to synergize super well, but I'll make it work. Okay, top of the villain. Henchman. If I fight him, I get something extra. So let's see what I got here. Well, first, let's go with MI6. Look at the top card of my deck. If it was zero, I could discard. Otherwise, draw... Well, draw regardless, so I'm just going to end up drawing this card. So I'm going to start with, and then next is going to be No Time to Be Rescued, Top Card of the Hero deck. I don't want another Jill. Let's go to the bottom. Play my Homer. Since I've already played another red card, I get to draw a card. Another Homer, another red, draw another card. I play a Jill to let me uh, KO a wound from my discard, which I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna play my tire shredder. I make KO uh, hero for my hand, which I'm gonna KO the basic card. Play a Tilly. I have not played another blue card yet, and I'm gonna play a basic. So let's count up everything we have here: attacks and recruits. So six recruit, eight total attack, which being it's eight total, well, six recruit, I'm going to use my attacks first against the mastermind since he's an eight. Take one of the three cards from below him, Let's see what happens. When I fight him, KO a highest cost hero in my hand in play or in the discard pile. So, he is going to deal some decent damage to me.
Let me see if it clarifies our rule on the Midas touch. If it's overall highest touch card I have, or if I'm choosing which. There's been questions online about this, but I'm going to play it as, in general, the highest card I have. Just straight up. Um, I have two that are eights. It could either be the passenger electric seat, or ejector seat, I'm sorry, or the all square. Uh, no, actually, not sorry, not all square. It was a true classic. which the, the attack value and potential to combo attack for free. I kind of want to keep that, so I don't want to do it, but I'm going to KO my classic, my true classic. It hurts so much. Oh, well, it is what it is. That's two of the four masterminds down. And I still have six to spend. I'm going to buy the she's covering paint over here that cost me six. Actually, I'm going to leave that there and take the five one. So whatever comes out is not quite as expensive. All those cards get discarded. I get six more cards. Six cards. We'll get ready for the next round. A little bit of everything. All the colors. Slower combos. It's okay. We still have fun with it. We're trying. We have another. We have a Mr. Mr. Ling. And Mr. Ling has plus attack equal to the danger level. Which, uh, the nice thing is, we've kept the danger level pretty low at zero. Hey, Chris. Bond. James Bond. Putting kids to bed. Just wanted to come by real quick and say hey. Well, thank you for stopping by. And a hey right back to you. Uh, probably about... 75%, 80% through the game. Um, if you decide to come back, I'll probably still be here for maybe another 30 minutes or so. But thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. I hope you've had a wonderful weekend, wonderful day. And I, I believe all your family is back in town, back at home. So I hope you've had some wonderful time back together with them. So let's see what cards we've got going on here. Well, we know we have the two basic Bond cards. Uh, none of these are going to synergize, so let me draw extra cards. So let's just start with, look at the top card of the hero deck. And that's a smuggled gold. Yeah, I'm going to put that at the bottom because I do not want Goldfinger to get more gold. We'll talk May with me later, okay. Uh, thanks for uh, getting some time with them and getting amp for tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow is going to be amazing. I'm so excited to get to play D&D, &D, especially being a campaign again. It's been a while since I've had a, f a full campaign set up. And just getting to play with you and Chelsea and Jade and JoJo. And then having Daryl DM us is going to be wonderful. Yeah, so feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions on what we've set up for that game. And we'll definitely talk later about the May plan, so... We can have some a game weekend, which will be so much fun. So let's see what I can do here real quick. Uh, I got my tire shredder. I'm actually going to shred that one. I've had enough of those 
Time to get rid of those. I have my Tilly and my all square. So a total of one, two, three, four, five attacks, four recruits. And then I will go. Ooh. Five attack to this one. When you fight this game, this card to the top of your deck. We'll do that. That'll be a nice extra attack next round. Four recruits. I'm going to pass on that because I don't want another rescue card. Discard all that. Draw six. And shuffle for one more. So it looks like we're about half a dozen cards left in the villain stack. So that is pushing the end of our game. We need to start attacking the mastermind more. I know we do have was at least one more mastermind, if not two more mastermind cards that can come out. We have several more scheme cards, two more scheme cards that could come out soon. Probably a couple more operations and on their way with of course more villains as well. So it's going to get a little bit more tricky to complete these missions. Okay. We're going to have a pretty good attack round coming up. So hopefully we get to keep all those cards. And a scheme twist, so that's going to go right here. Makes it a little bit more expensive, but doesn't hurt us too much. I'm okay with that. So let's see if we can synergize these and make the most use of them. Oh no. Well, that's a bad time. Well, let's start with this one. I'm going to play this two attack. Let's me draw a card. Okay, nice. Gives me that one. And we need to get to eight attack for Goldfinger right now. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to play the Tire Shredder KO, one of my basic agent attacks. That's going to be two attack. Playing this card, which is five attack. But I may fight a villain for free this turn. Basically, that allows me, because I've played another black card, or black symbol card, I can, one of these villains, I can just wipe off for free. Um, well, odd jobs, the hardest to defeat right now, so I'm just going to take him out. He's hurt us the most as well. Currently, we're still sitting at 9 total attack. Let's make that 11. 14. 15. So I think first things first, I'm going to deal with Goldfinger. It's going to cost us 8. Leaving us seven. So let's see what one of those mastermind cards ha ha uh, does to us. So the smuggling is an art. And when we fight him, put each hero in Q branch on the bottom of the hero deck. Well, not, not definitely not the worst that happened. So each of these five cards goes to the bottom. I, I, was, I was ready for some new cards to come out. Be honest. Oh, that's gonna make him tougher now. A lot of cards I don't care for. Interesting. So he's now a nine. We had 15, we used eight, so we have seven left. Definitely can't deal with the mastermind again. But we can deal with one of these. They're both fours. The Fort Knox Assault Team, if we fought, we would get one recruit. We don't have any other recruit this turn, so we don't want to waste that extra recruit. 
So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna deal with Mr. Lane instead. All those are discard. And six more. So the goal of the game is to deal with Goldfinger Mastermind one more time before this danger level could get to five, which we've done really well at not even letting that go up. Or the inevitable card, which we're about six cards away from, will come out, tells us what happened, and if that passes all the way down the line, then we're in trouble. I think we got this in the bag. It'll, it's, a, it's the slow burn style game that we've played. So let's see what that villain card's going to be. So it's Escape the Cell. Perfect timing. We're getting ready to escape the cell and go with the final plans and reveal everything he told us. So it does have an ambush effect. Uh, put the highest cost hero in Q branch under this as a prisoner. This mission has attack equal to the prisoner's cost. If we succeed, we gain the prisoner. Highest cost is currently... Technically because the scheme cost th those increase it, but we have a tire shredder for four. Really not the worst, because I like the tire shredder. Four is pretty easy to beat value nowadays. And this comes out. Ooh, another smuggled gold. So... Goldfinger is now has a total of 10 to defeat. Fortunately, we only have to do it one time. So let's see what we got going on. We got a couple of Tillies that we can combo together, which is always fun to do. Um, I'm going to start with this card because it's pretty basic. I'll look at the top of the hero deck again. An all square card. I do like that one though. I'm gonna leave it. Okay. Currently at two recruit. Plus one is three. Now nothing else in my hand is gonna give me recruit, so I'm just gonna look real quick. Do I want anything for three? Uh, da, 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 da. Not really, but hold hold on to that thought because if I take this one out, I can get one more recruit and be able to afford another homer. I'll decide after I figure out how much damage I can do this round. So I'm going to start with showing I have one straight right through the barrel damage, easy enough. And then I'm going to play this one. Gives me three damage. Total of four so far. Not too bad. Plus two. Gives me six. Plus two more. Gives me eight. Plus the special effect. Gives me nine total. Well. I can't deal with Goldfinger. Because he's ten. But we got a four here. We got a four here. Dealing with this one also gives me the extra recruit for the homer I think dealing with both of these gets me two cards too so it's a win-win so I'm going to deal four of the nine to that one well sorry that goes up here that gives me one recruit four total recruit can give me this one to the discard Ooh, the next one and then I saw five attack left four that's going to go here finishes that off gets me that card Still one attack left, no recruit left, all to discard. One, two, three, four, five, six to draw. That's going to end the round right there. Okay, next villain card is gonna, going to be Odd Job again. Uh, persist. At the end of each turn, the active player gains a wound. Okay. So he has a persistent effect. So, this is the first time we've seen Persist. If this card would, would be pushed off on assignment up here, stays where it is, and the card pushing would escape instead. So if, it got, if somehow it got down here, and it was supposed to be pushed off and escape, it stays here. So, odd job stays in place. Well, hello! Thank you for the raid. 
I appreciate it. I am Jaybird the Word, and here I like to play games and spread joy because gaming is one of my favorite hobbies. Uh, today I have been playing Legendary, the James Bond deck building game, 007. We're playing against Goldfinger. Uh, we're about 90% through the game. We're this close to beating the game. So you've come just in time to, to see 007 win it all. Uh, and you just got pl done playing Marvel Legendary. That's awesome. Uh, who'd y'all play against? Who'd you play as? Uh, did you win? Uh, was it a multiplayer game? Was it solo? Oh, nice. Beating Kingpin. All always a great ac accomplishment. Um, it's been a while since I've played against him. I, I do need to pull out that game again. Um, but yes, welcome. I am... A newer streamer I've only been streaming for about a month or so on Monday nights I stream games where either chat can tell me what moves to make or I play a game where they can play along at the same time kind of like uh, roll and rights and stuff like that Friday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern I do unbox the week where I ch hang out with chat and they could help me choose what games to unbox and unwrap from my collection A choose your own adventure campaign nice uh, and then also on Tuesday nights I actually co-host and help stream with the charity board gamer which tomorrow night we're starting a brand new D&D &D campaign for a adventure that is being brought to Kickstarter soon yes indeed thank you for the follow um, working on getting that follow account up so y'all can have channel points and suggest things and chat for me to do more often uh one of the things i'll have be coming up is being that my name is jaybird and i have a parrot onesie so I'll, i want people to be able to make me wear a bird costume on stream <laughs> 10 away from 50. well let me so i don't forget i'm going to actually click into your name Make sure I go give you a follow as well. Because I appreciate... Not only do I appreciate the follow and the raid, but anyone that loves gaming and likes spreading joy is welcome in the family. Soon to be seven. Exactly. Make Mark that seven right now. I just did it. <laughs> so, yes. Um... Yes, indeed. Thank you for the follow, <laughs> Pups Jasper. Uh, so I just revealed the next villain card. Uh, this one is Ajab. Uh, he has a persist, so he actually never pushes off the escaped. He would stay in and everything pushing would jump past him. So you do Marvel Legendary on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Do other board games, Jackbox and Fox. That is a lot of Marvel Legendary, but understanding how many different cards there are, that I could see how long it could take to play through all those options and combinations. Uh, so yeah, I have my hand of cards right here that we drew last round. I will go over what they are. And currently Goldfinger, I have, I have to defeat him one more time. Currently his attack value with the smuggle gold puts him at a 10 total of attack that we need. Um, part of the scheme that we're playing is when scheme twists come out, they actually go under the Q branch cards, making them cost one additional uh, recruit point. So, as you can see, a lot of them have come out. A lot of the cards have become more expensive to buy. So anything on top of them is one additional. Um, but we are very close. As you can see, there's only four more cards. But 007, the 007 setup is set up so you actually plan through, kind of like the movie. So there's... Um, there's deck A, B, C for the storylines where, where you mix them up. So it actually feels like you're playing through the story from the movie. So you're not encountering something from the end of the movie at the beginning and vice versa. So it's been really cool to see how they've implemented that to make it work. So I've drawn that. So yeah, it's now now time to play my cards. Um, I'll show you the basic, basic cards first. We have our basic 007 basic starter recruit cards. I don't have it in my hand, but I do have one right here that I KO'd. This is the basic attack card. It's kind of looking down the gun barrel. 
Um, they've also set it up. I'm actually playing all of the James Bond basic cards from the same movie, but in the box, because the box has basically four different movie lo stories. And so from the basic starters, it uses the bond from the four different movies. So you have Pierce Brosnan. I'm blanking on the other ones. But of course, we have Sean Connery showing up right here, which classic. It's hard not to play as him. But yeah, th I'm actually playing the first time player because this is my first time playing the double the James Bond set. So it was fun to learn it on stream, showing it off. So the cards I have in my hand right now that I can... Probably the easiest one to start with. Uh, this is no time to be rescued. It allows me to look at the top card of the hero deck. I'm allowed to put it on the bottom. So if I know it's a card I don't want to purchase, I can just put it at the bottom. This is the, the Felix Leader. It's an ally. It would give me three recruit, zero attack. But if I had played another one of the aiming blue symbols, I would get three attack, costing six. I don't have that in my deck yet. Um... It is six recruits. It would give me a little bit of attack. I think I'm going to pass on it because I want something that's more guaranteed attack. So I'm going to let it go to the bottom of the deck. Hopefully I see something come up later that's better. And then I have Jill Masterson. Uh, of course, a little bit of rest at night helps heal the wounds. So she allows you to KO wound in any player's discard pile. Which, let me check. I don't think I currently do have a wound in my discard. So her effect is not as powerful right now because I've used it enough times. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks for the follow, Kayla15. And let's see what else can I do. So the next two cards are both going to be the same. But because I've already played one of the yellow symbols, it will allow this one to trigger its special ability. So... It's not only is it worth one and one, one recruit, one attack. I can now give a mission or villain on assignment. So the on assignment is this row instead of it being like the city. Keep spreading the love. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for spreading joy into my night for the follow. Uh, so it allows us to reduce it by either two recruit or two attack. So I can use that effect to reduce this from eight to six. Now, what well, we've already done and completed some, some assignments. Let me see if I can find one that uses recruit instead of attack. But some of these missions or objective cards that come onto, onto the assignment villain row actually use the recruit value from your cards instead of, instead of attack values. Because as spies, it's not always about brute force. It's about using our brains and and possibly paying off someone. So it, it's been really interesting the way they've implemented that use as well. So that, that's why this allows it to either deal with to recruit or to attack reduction. Now I actually have two of those. And since of course I've already played that same symbol, I can trigger both kind of consecutively. As you probably know from playing the legendary how, how to really combo cards together. So not only do I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight recruit, basically allowing me to buy anything out. Yes, thank you for the follow, Ollie Kit Kat. I appreciate it. That has spread joy into my evening. I hope I'm able to spread joy into your evening as well. And then let's see, one, two attack. Both of those help reduce it. That would be four. So I don't have quite enough attack to deal with it, but I can buy some stuff. So we talked about it. I had eight total. Like I said, these scheme twists make these cards cost one additional on top of what they would be. Um, he is not a henchman, so the ability on this is not as powerful because it's two attack, two attack, plus two attack that can only be used to fight a henchman. This, I've already been using that ability to look at the top cards, KOing wounds. I'm gonna start with this one, use four of my eight so I take that to discard. The scheme twist stays here, so anything that goes on top of it is going to cost one additional now. I still have four to spend. Ooh, I have not seen that one yet. 007 seconds. It's an equipment card. It says it's a zero, 0 but you may get seven recruit and seven attack if you do KO this card. 
or if you play a different red symbol card, don't KO this card. And it would cost eight total because it's on, sitting on a scheme card. That is a very powerful, very fun card. Hopefully I can afford to get it soon. I still have four to spend. Uh, I'm not really feeling any of these other cards. I'm just not going to buy anything else because I don't want to mess up my deck too much. So all those go to discard. I'm going to draw my six new cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. I currently have one card left in my deck. We'll see if I get to draw through it and we'll get ready for the next round. Okay, so I'm going to... I do see several matching colors. I'm going to be able to synergize, synergize those and make some fun combos. The next villain deck card is actually one of our operation cards. And so this is uh, Disarm the Bomb. So this has negative two recruit for each of the black hero symbol cards I've played this turn, which typically would be 10 recruit to deal with it. But I may be able to deal with it, or maybe not a, quite enough, but I do have quite a few black, black symbol cards in my deck. So that will be helpful. Now, what happens with these is if these cards ever get pushed back past an escape, these actually range, uh, raise the danger level by the number in the upper corner. If we ever reach five for this setup, we automatically lose. I've happen to be doing really well to get rid of those types of cards before they ever escape because as you can see nothing has escaped um if this last card that's going to come out is going to be an edible card once it gets to a certain point it would end the game and be considered a draw if the danger is not too high but i've not beat all the masterminds so there's kind of a win a lose and that 50 50 draw factor that could come into play so let's see what cards i got So first, let's start with our special starter card. So at the beginning of the game, we actually had, I'll show them off real quick. There's five, uh, five different starter cards special for, the, for this setup alone that I had chat choose which one I would use. And they chose for me to use MI6 instead of like a special upgrade or my field issue standard gun the Shaken Not Stirred, or the Bond James Bond special card. But then my six has come in handy. Automatically gives me one recruit, and I get to look at the top card of my deck. If it's a zero-cost card, I can discard it. Whether I discard it or not, I automatically get to draw a card. So if, meaning if it's going to cost me something, I know I'm going to end up drawing that card. So it's a zero-cost. I have the choice to discard that, which I will, and I'm allowed to draw a card now. I have nothing in my draw pile, so I'm going to shuffle my discard. Yep, discard, and then draw is nice. Love drawing. Yep, that's, the cycle effect of that alone is really strong, especially in the beginning of the game, because you know how many cards you have that are zeros. It's like, well, it's either going to be what I draw, or the next one could be the exact same, or might be that card I just bought and, sh and shuffled back into. So yeah, I'm gonna shuffle my discard right now. Hopefully get an even more powerful card, because all I want is that attack value right now, because I need to deal with that mastermind one more time at a value of 10. So let's see what card we're going to get. Ooh, one of my powerful cards. Nice. I like this one. So I'm not going to play it yet because I want to combo it. So I'll show you how I'm going to combo it. So first, I'm going to play these red Homer cards. First one, two attack. Simple enough. But the second one I do, combos because of the red symbol, allows me to draw another card. We love drawing cards here. And now, we're going to have four of these black cards that can all combo together. So this is going to be really fun. So I'm going to put my one recruit over there out of the way. May or may not play it. Um, first card is I may KO a hero in my hand. 
yeah, I'm going to just KO that basic starter card because we want, we want these special cards that combo. Of course, we want to get rid of the basic cards as soon as we can. And that's to attack. And that's our first black card to have played. Another the exact same thing. Two more attack. And another. So we're already sitting at 10 attack. We've got this game in the hand at this point. But I'm going to show you the power of the passenger ejector seat. Not only is it 5 attack. Because we've played another black card. Uh, was my favorite game. Also was the game that uh, I played that wasn't what I expected in a good way. Those are both great questions. Um, I'll have to think about that for a second. Uh, but first off, yeah, where I was, uh, because of the black cards I've already, black symbol cards I've already played, this allows me to fight a villain for free this turn. Just straight up fight the villain using no attack. Just straight up defeat it. So this eight villain, he's just done. Nice and simple, straight up, he's done. I love the power of that. And then of course he still has five attack. And then because I have 10 attack, I can deal with the last mastermind card, which says, when you fight them, the next time the mastermind is fought, it must be with recruit instead of attacks, which is not a big deal because that is the last time I technically have to fight him. And that is all four of the mastermind cards. And we have officially beaten Goldfinger. Okay, so back to the thought of my favorite game. Um, I have a hard time deciding on one exact favorite, but probably one that's at the top of the list and that I will never say no to is Role Player. Uh, so Role Player, A, just because I really have always enjoyed D&D stuff and like the different characters and the, the so role player is essentially it's creating a D and D character, but they made a game out of it instead of just sitting there looking at a book. It is where each round dice are rolled in the middle of the table. And then you kind of take turns drafting those dice into your character sheet, which is a board and each row of the character abilities kind of like your D&D character of like strength and stuff and you're trying to match certain numbers by the end of the game in those rows to get so many points um, but when you place the die into a certain each certain row has a special effect of maybe you can flip a die over you can move a die around and stuff like that and so there's a lot of variability in the setup of okay maybe I'm playing the orc board whatever and the board wants certain stat numbers and then throughout the game as you're playing you can also use coins that you're accumulating to buy equipment that are worth extra points at the end of the game so just just the way they've taken probably one of my favorite parts of D&D of creating different unique characters and making a full game out of it that works really well is one of my favorite things yeah exactly everyone loves rolling a character and the and just the way this goes about it has been one of my favorites since I learned about it. And then a game that I played that wasn't what I expected, but in a good way. Oh. See, I don't know on that because it, most games I play, I tend to go into pre-reading rules, watching videos and stuff. So for the most part, I tend to know what I'm expect to expect before I actually sit down at the table. Um, just because of how many different games I learn. Like we've, with my game group and streams, I've, we've always made it a habit to learn beforehand because we want to show off the game. We want to enjoy the game together. So... Um, so I'm trying to think of the last one, that game that I was 
that was different than I expected per se. Probably the last one that I guess surprised me in, in the best way, probably because I, I knew the least about it, was um, Kingdom Rush. Um, it was the the Elemental Uprising because we got to get a preview copy of it and play it on stream uh, several months back. And both me and Chris, the charity board gamer that I was playing with, knew very little about the game, even like the from the digital game of it. And but we had so much fun playing it together that a because of the it was not on Kickstarter, but the game found that it was on. I basically immediately went and backed the whole version of it because I was like, I gotta have this <laughs> and really enjoy it and have fun with it. So that yeah, that was probably the one that surprised me the most and from knowing the least about um, about it and enjoying it the most in a great way. Uh, so what are some of the games y'all typically, well, of course you enjoy uh, Legendary and Marvel games, but like what other typical games do y'all typically get to the table, enjoy the most? Would you say are some of your favorites? Enjoyed Dice Forge. So I, I picked up that game, um, but that was like right before uh, pandemic happened and my gaming group stopped for a while, so I actually never got it to the table. And kind of same with Secret Hitler. That was actually a game I received for my birthday last year, but haven't had a big enough game group to play it. Werewolf I've enjoyed with the right groups. Um, I've had some groups that don't enjoy the social deduction as much so I've had some not as great experiences with it but of course like most games you have to play it with the correct group so I do have a group or two that has really enjoyed it so I do enjoy it with them so probably the one I so I've, yeah Werewolf I've the experience I enjoyed the most we did a zoom play of it a while back um yeah but probably my favorite social deduction game it's it's a bit simpler, but I've found that everyone gets to enjoy it together is, um, is it hidden or secret? It's, I need to verify the name. It's, it's, it's actually a panda game, uh, where you're trying to capture pandas. I believe it's hidden panda. Yeah, panda, hey, pandas are just cute and um, cuddly and amazing to begin with. And then you make a social deduction game out of them that's family friendly. It's It was amazing. And it, come, and it came with panda meeples. I was like, yes, yes, and yes. Um, I got to play test it first at BGG Spring 18 and immediately backed it. Yeah, it's Hidden Panda from Jelly Bean Games. And it's set up to be family friendly. And so kind of like Werewolf where you have some people close their eyes so teammates can see each other. But it's done in a way that even the narrator gets to play. And they have like a little script card so it helps so kids can play along too. Because it's made for like ages 8 and up but even younger can play if they can read. Um, so you're basically like giving out little baby pandas to certain people and you're trying to have your team be it you're the panda team or you're the team who's trying to capture the pandas, the poachers collect the most baby pandas by the end of the game. But there's a mechanic where like you start giving too many pandas away to your own teammate, you can catch and like kind of call out that team and be like, oh, you're a panda. And if you guess correctly, you can basically steal all their baby pandas. Yeah. It, yeah, it's a great way to level the playing field and have everyone play together. It's and it's a small box too, kind of like Werewolf, but it's cute art. I'd have to verify if the Panda Meeples were Kickstarter exclusive or not, but it does have cute Panda chits it uses in, in place if it does not have the Meeples, but 
it's something I would highly recommend if you enjoy uh, social deduction style games. Hand carved one tokens. Woof. That is. Uh, that'd be interesting to see. Yeah, the last few times I played Werewolf, we were playing over Zoom. I think we actually played on stream. It takes two. Okay, that I don't know much about that game. But I definitely have to look that up. So when do y'all typically stream? <laughs> it's new, essentially divorce simulator 2.0. Well, I'm not sure if I'd be good or bad at that because I did get divorced a few years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's always interesting to find out new games and learn about them and see what style of games they come out with. I don't think it's posted yet. Um, celebrating your 10 years this July. Well, congratulations on that. Um, I tried and I got close. I hit seven years and things fell apart. But such is life. Things get better. If we focus on the past and only the past. We get stuck there. We gotta look at the future and how bright it can be as we play games and spread joy together, right? Uh, exactly. And, and honestly, it, it's things that I go through that make me who I am today and make me appreciate uh, the gaming community more and everyone I've met. And I wouldn't be where I am today without having gone through that. So there's definitely pros and cons to the experience, but at the end of the day, would I change it? Maybe not. But it is what it is. I am where I am. And I'm enjoying it. But yeah, um, back to gaming. <laughs> we don't need to be downers. Um, so, where were we? So, really cute and co-op. Um, yeah, def I definitely enjoy the right, uh, some good co-ops. Um, when they're done right. I've, of course, some co-ops get to the point where you get that quarterback effect, but I found when you get either find the right players or the right game, co-ops work really well on top of that. So kind of like games like Legendary where there's that co-op effect of everyone's fight working together to defeat the storyline, but kind of in the background you can still play it as competitive, just a hair with who defeats the most and gets the most points is kind of a fun twist on that. Um, it has not posted yet, so let me try to get it posted. Um, I actually post all my replay stuff on YouTube as well, and I'm currently doing a giveaway on my YouTube for those who are interested. Let me make sure what my command is so y'all can... So about a week and a half ago on Friday, as part of my unboxing of the week segment that I did, I opened a copy of Paladins of the West Kingdom, which is the first one of kind of that game line that I'd actually opened. And so I still need to learn it, but I had an additional copy that is brand new and shrink that I'm giving away to someone in the US. So feel free to go click on that link, uh, give a like and follow there and comment to have a chance to win your own copy um but yeah um so on youtube i post a lot of the stuff i'm doing on here i do some game reviews how to plays and you can also find me on instagram where i'm basically posting a picture at least once a day of different games i'm playing and learning talk about where i do kind of the micro review style where i do a quick talk about the game uh but yeah definitely had a, f a lot of fun trying out this game tonight being the first time I played it especially with the nostalgia of the 007 uh, thank you very much for that um, of course picking up the followers there is just like here it's it's a slow growth but worth every single person that joins the journey um, so yeah I'm 
gonna get ready to end this stream. Uh, it's getting late here. It is pretty much time for me to go to bed being East Coast. <laughs> Doing some viewer interaction for Legendary with Tabletop Simulator. Okay. I'll definitely have to go look at your schedule on when you're streaming. Hopefully I can catch it soon. Um, but yeah, I'm going to actually check who else is streaming right now. Hopefully I can do a, a raid of my own and we can follow the hype forward. Okay. Yep. It has to be. One of my favorite lovely humans that I've got to play a few games with this weekend on Discord and is one of my mods and is just amazing to interact with in general is Panda Angel. I don't know if y'all know her. Uh, also um, goes by Amanda Panda. So I am going to do... See if I do it right. Read at... And, uh, Angel. I spell it right, it will work. So, thank you for joining me tonight. I appreciate the raid and all the follows and the interactions. It's been a been a blast talking to y'all and getting to know you. Hopefully I can join in on your streams. So we're going to go raid uh, Amanda. So say hi to her. Uh, be lovely as you've been lovely in here. And... As always, play games and spread joy.